And how does Procter & Gamble specifically strategize to respond proactively to such rapidly changing needs of consumers? Uh, what role do you uh, think plays in implementing scientific research and turning into functioning brands? What role would you play uh, into very proactively studying all these consumer needs? Okay, um, consumer needs and scientific knowledge I think go very, very much hand in hand. So um, when you, for example, have a new hairstyle that comes into fact, you know, a new, uh, new way of, of like styling your hair, new product usage, things like that, then this has an effect on how we actually develop the products as well, and vice versa. So with new technologies, we enable new product styles as well, or new hairstyles as well. So they're, they're intrinsically linked. So I think on two levels, consumer needs uh, build on the scientific knowledge to an extent, because scientific knowledge enables new product technologies, and the other way around as well. Uh, and the, the scientific knowledge then enables to build new consumer needs. Right. So, uh, you know, in Pakistan nowadays, do uh, you think that Procter & Gamble conducted any separate scientific research in Pakistan for Pakistani consumers? And if so, how have the consumer needs uh, for hair and care differentiated in Pakistan compared to those globally? So we are working all, all across the world. So we've got technical centers everywhere and, and not every single continent, um, and uh, except for Africa, so most of the continents. Um, and one of the key things for us is really to understand what are the regional differentiation between people, what are the differences in needs. Uh, and what I can say is that for head and shoulders and for scalp care specifically, the scalp needs of people are very much the same. And the reason for that is that the physiology and the scalp problems really have the same fundamental reasons. Yeah. Um, but what's different is the hair needs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that starts with male-female differences. So males typically have shorter hair; they need different hair products. Uh, females typically have longer hair. But then you look at the hair quality and hair types as well. So in this region here, I know women and, and people in general typically have very strong uh, hair, very resilient hair, quite thick hair, and obviously quite dark hair. And that needs a specific treatment, so we need to combine our scalp care technology with uh, a differentiated hair care technology to make sure that people really get the best, best of both worlds. Right. And uh, a lot of people have been asking this question around, uh, if I were to put it this way, for example, hair and shoulders in Pakistan, would it be different from, the same product would be different uh, biologically or composition-wise, for example, hair and shoulders in any other country? Um, we believe that it's actually the bigger differences in the consumer needs uh, than, than in the region. We do have some regional variations, but uh, really what we try to do is we try to offer a product for the most common hair needs and the end looks that people want to go for. So, for example, if you have very thin hair uh, and maybe oily hair, you should use a different product from uh, somebody who's got very thick and strong hair that might be a little bit on the dry side. So that's really the most important difference when it comes to differentiating uh, products and developing types of products. And uh, if I just uh, ask you to consider the entire hair, hair care and skin industry, not just Procter & Gamble, mm -hmm. all the competing companies who mm -hmm. are in this industry, what do you find lacking in the current industry? Something that you would you know, find unfulfilling, something that mm -hmm. you would want to bridge? I think um, there's still so much knowledge we can generate on the science side. That's really the science key point. Side, yeah. So we have made huge progress over the last um, 20 years, really, with new molecular techniques. But um, it's like with many things in nature and many things in science, there's so many more things we can learn. So it really is important that we keep on doing the scientific research and really come to the very, very bottom of understanding the skin and hair in, in the greatest level of detail. And do you think other competing brands are indulging in such extensive scientific research, investing in expert human resources to identify the changing hair yeah, care and in care needs? Well, I can tell you for how we are looking at science and innovation. So take it and show us as an example. We are this year in our 50th anniversary. So we've been on the market for 50 years. But before that, we actually worked for over 10 years on clinical studies, on uh, methodologies to try and develop a suitable product. And ever since we came to the market 50 years ago, uh, we've continued very, very strongly to work on a scientific program to build understanding of dandruff, build understanding of how we can best treat the hair. And for us, it's a Essentially, it's the lifeblood of the brand that's due to scientific information. And uh, I'm not sure about other, other companies and how much they invest, but really, for us, the most important thing is to have this heritage and really focus on the science on a continuous basis. And where do you think the current hair skin and skin industry is heading for in terms of scientific innovation in the future? And what could possibly then be the next big breakthrough in this respective field? Okay, the future, I think, is really life sciences. We've started to see this already with genetics, genomics kind of methodologies. And I think the biggest breakthroughs will probably come in this area as well. And I think that will enable us to understand even better um, exactly how the skin responds to the fungus that causes dandruff, for example. And 
the, the skin is such a dynamic system that's so highly regulated by so many different factors. I think the big breakthroughs will come from the fact that we will understand how these factors work together. Right. And uh, keeping Pakistan in mind, uh, where do you think Pakistan is heading when you talk about scientific research and healthcare skin research? That's an interesting one. I'm, I'm not too so familiar with the scientific landscape in Pakistan. I know there's a, there's a few uh, good universities and I've, I've heard about some very good researchers here in, in Pakistan doing fundamental research within Pakistan but also outside of Pakistan. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure where, which direction the main focus actually goes. But uh, I think the beauty is that um, as we have the electronic age now, people can work together much, much closely, more closely than they have been in the past. So I think um, borders will not play a role in the future and countries will not play such a big role in the future when it comes to scientific research because um, everybody who's smart and who's got the right methodologies at their hands and the right laboratories can actually do that research and share it with everybody else. Okay, just one final question that will be the ending note. Uh, if you can talk about where Procter & Gamble is heading in terms of scientific innovation, what consumers can expect on a more consumer level? Mm. Uh, what would you say would that be in the next uh, 10 to 15 years? What okay, again for me the key point is even more fundamental understanding. So we really, I, I guess we, we are probably the most consumer focused company uh, really to make sure that we really understand what are consumers' wishes, what will, our consumers' aspirations, what do they want to uh, uh, see, feel, look like in the future. And uh, this is really where I think we're headed in the future as well. We're going to intensify that even more and make sure that we understand consumers even better than we do today. Uh, and we compare that and combine that rather with the scientific uh, knowledge that we will increase as well with the new methodologies. And I think that really will be, will be the, the, the big focus in the future as, as it has been. I think it's a continuous focus that has been for the last 10, 15 years already. Thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.